Hi, I'm uh, Chris Wiley, and I'm here today with Dr. Peter Lau. Uh, hi, Peter. How are you doing? I'm uh, good, Chris. How are you? Great, great. Thanks for, for joining me. Now, Peter, you and I are both involved as instructors for CEP courses. And uh, for anyone who's not sure, uh, CEP is the Centre for Expository Preaching. It's a ministry of KVBC Trust, and it provides pastors, teachers, ministry leaders, with a, with a firm grounding in expository ministry through seminars, courses, workshops on biblical exposition. Uh, and e an example of one of those courses is the CEP Preaching Old Testament course, uh, which will be happening later this year. And Pete, Peter, you're involved in that. So uh, let's have a chat about the course and about preaching in general. And perhaps we could start with um, what is expository preaching? Uh, so my definition of expository preaching is Preaching where the sermon points and the main message come from the biblical text. So that's that's my sort of working definition. Um, any thoughts, Chris? Yeah, I mean that that sounds very similar to what I've uh, I've read and, and heard before as well. I think that's very helpful. Um, I've also uh, heard it explained about uh, the the sort of the opening up uh, and unfolding of the text. Um, uh, uh, but um, but I think one of the things we also need to remember, isn't it, that um, as we do expository preaching, we're not aiming to do a running commentary on the entire text. A any thoughts yeah, about yeah. that? Uh, I have heard people try to give expository expository sermons, and it's just basically uh, explaining the text almost phrase by phrase or verse by verse, mm -hmm. uh, unpacking it that sort of way. Um, but it's not really, there's no digestion of the text. There's no sort of thinking through the implications for us today, um, how it all fits together, how to package it as a, a sermon uh, and also thinking about, you know, what is the main message? What is the thing you're trying to drive home uh, as you're preaching? Um, that is, that's that running commentary style, we sort of break it up in little bits. That's not what we're trying to go for. Um, right. It doesn't really have an, has an eye on the text, but the eye sort of stays on the text and doesn't really come to <laughs> the, the hearer and the context of us in Malaysia, 21st century or Australia, wherever it might be. Right. And how we can apply it in our own lives. Mm -hmm. So, what else does expository preaching involve? So we've got the sort of broad general definition, what it is, and then also what it isn't. It's not a running commentary. But um, it might be helpful if you sort of break it down into little chunks so we can know how to get from the Bible text to 21st century Malaysia today. Mm -hmm. So um, what I like to think about in the first place is different contexts. So we read the text, the Bible text in certain contexts, and uh, we need to understand the Bible in the context, otherwise we um, misunderstand what it's trying to say. So one context is um, the literary context. So where, where does your passage fit into um, the book? Where does it fit into that, that section of the Bible? Where does it fit into the, the whole Bible as a whole? So we move from literary context all the way to canonical context. Canonical context is the whole storyline of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Um, and I find that actually understanding a text within all those uh, those two contexts helps us to understand uh, its broader meaning and maybe the fuller message it's trying to bring across. Um, other contexts also uh, we need to consider is the historical and the cultural context as well. So, you know, um, all texts are written in a particular context, historical, cultural context. They're not written in a vacuum. So even as we speak today, uh, we are, you know, we are restrained by i'm in sydney you're in malaysia that's our sort of historical cultural context 21st century um so we also need to consider those as we read the bible text uh, so literary historical cultural uh, canonical context um they're some of the um the main contexts that we need, con need to consider as we do expository preaching uh moving from the text to our context today in that sense um but but I guess for us as Christians, when you read the Old Testament, uh, we don't read it as Jews, we read it as Christians, which means that we need to consider the difference that Jesus makes uh, to our interpretation of the Bible, uh, especially Old Testament, because it's a huge shift when Jesus comes, right? So we read uh, the Old Testament, in a sense, in light of Christ, or you can say in the, through the lens of Christ. And one question I always ask is, what difference does Jesus make to our interpretation and application of this Bible text? Mm. That's so important to remember, isn't it? Especially, as you said, with the Old Testament, uh, where sometimes um, Jesus may not be so clearly in view, uh, and yet everything needs to go uh, to him and through him. Yeah. Great. And uh, Now, um, uh, so how is expository preaching actually helpful? 
we'll, we'll have a chat about this maybe in three sections. So maybe we'll go section by section. Okay. Um, I think so. As as I think it's helpful for us as preachers. Um, it's helpful for us as hearers of God's word. And then it also, there's some, I guess, safeguards that we can talk about as well um, when we use uh, expository preaching and how it's helpful in that way. Uh, so firstly, um, you know, sometimes as preachers, we, I guess, wonder what authority, what authority do we have to get on the lectern to actually speak to God's people? For me, a big thing is authority. Are we speaking on our own authority? Are we speaking based on our, our learning or education or just who we are? Or are we speaking based on the authority of God's text or God's word? Um, so I think expository preaching helps us get at the authority of God's word in a, in a much better way than, I don't know, what which other, which other styles of preaching, topical or uh, whatever, what other styles you want to go for. So as a preacher, expository preaching gives me assurance that our preaching holds authority because it is grounded on the authority of God's word itself. So, so that's the first point, I guess, for us as preachers. Did you have any thoughts about that, Bruce? Yeah, and and I think maybe just to add from the preacher's perspective, uh, it helps us a lot with planning our preaching, doesn't it? I mean, it's a very practical point, but um, if I was going to preach topically week by week, I might be scratching my head week by week thinking, what am I going to talk on this time? Uh, but once I start on a book of the Bible and I work through it systematically to, with expository preaching, um, that really helps me to plan out my my sermon schedule for the next few months, typically. So I think it has that benefit as well. Um, yeah, that's right. So you can go through the Bible book from the beginning to the end. So you know you're going to go through chapter one and then next will be chapter two, chapter three. Or if you want to do sections, you might one to three, four to six, whatever. But at right. least it's it's already there planning for, planning for you in a sense, right, as you say? Yeah, yeah. The second point I wanted to mention about expository preaching in terms of benefit, it's beneficial not only for the preacher, but also for the hearer. So yes. often uh, when I sit in sermons and listen to sermons, if it's an expository sermon, I know generally what's going to happen. So it helps me to digest what's going to happen and uh, take on board the message because it's going to, if the points are going to be based from the text, I know it's going to go from basically beginning of the passage to the end. Yes. And so it's, it's much easier to follow. Uh, I'm not sitting there thinking, oh, What's he going to say next? And how's that point related to the previous point? Because I know because I can actually look at the Bible. I can see, well, that's where he's been. This is where he's going to go. And if I don't understand how the connection, how it's connected, I try and work it out from the text myself. From that perspective, I think it's um, maybe loving. <laughs> you could say loving or considerate of the hearer as well um, because they can actually follow on uh, more easily. And in an expository sermon, if, it, if, if it's actually based on the text, if the person doesn't understand or disagrees with what you say they can they can look at the text and then the argument is not with you it's with the text itself so right. um i guess that sort of blurs its benefit for the hearer but also benefit for you <laughs> as a preacher as well uh, in a sense and maybe just to add on another thought um uh, do you think expository preaching uh, can help the congregation in terms of training them in how to read the bible for themselves Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. As here, as we listen to an expository sermon, we can get to see how to read God's word, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, so you can see how the preacher goes from the text, moves through the text, thinks about interpretation and applications through Christ. And it's the same method that we use for devotions or Bible studies or teaching Sunday school or giving youth talks. Um, it's basically the same method. Uh, you might want to repackage things a little bit differently, but in terms of the method, it's it's going to be the same, right? Mm -hmm. Moving from text uh to to today i guess the last one is safe to safeguard because if you're not going through a bible book chapter by chapter as you suggested before an alternative would be to do topics right topical sermons yeah. um but what are you going to preach on we're yeah. all human and so we have certain passions we have certain um predilections or certain hobby horses that we prefer to speak on um and I guess we'd be tempted to just keep on going back to those same hobby horses um, or, or things that we're really passionate about. And then we neglect huge swaths of the Old Testament or huge sections of the Old Testament. So last night with my small group, we were talking about gender and sex. So that's a topical, it's topical. But mm -hmm. I was saying to Kat, um, how come we don't cover this in, in sermons mm -hmm. uh, in church? Um, is it because we've neglected say song of songs or have we neglected you know uh, the aspects of genesis one and two where or you know parts of leviticus that talks about homosexual 
uh, practices and so on. Have we actually neglected those? Um, and we've had to, you know, move to a topical, but that's that's by the by. But I'm just saying, <laughs> if we'd actually gone through, you know, if we go through the Bible, all of it, then we get the whole teaching of of the whole of Scripture, which is what God wants us to live a full and godly life, right? Um, and I guess that's one of the, the safeguards of, of um, expository preaching as well. It'll actually make us, will force us to look at every single chapter of what God is saying to us. Yeah. Right.